in his mid-twenties as a guest at King James, or Bible fame, in the Tower of London. In other words, he was in prison. Why was he there? Because he dared to challenge King James, who said, I am going to be the head of the church as well as the head of the country. And William Penn said, no king but King Jesus. A phrase later borrowed by Patrick Henry. No king but King Jesus. And that's why he ended up in prison. But when he was in there, he wrote this book. I had on that table back there, the first ever modern translation of his book. It just came out a year, less than a year ago. Because the book up until now was written in King James English, almost more King James than the King James Bible. Very difficult to understand. But we have the first modern English, modern translation. Now, if you want to understand America, you have to start here. Because if you don't know where you came from, you won't know what you're doing here, and you certainly won't know where you're going. And this is the book that influenced the founding fathers more than any other book in their compiling of the founding documents. It's a vital book that you should have a copy of if you want to understand where we came from, what we're doing here, and where we're going, because it all involves change. But let's just look at this a little bit more, because it's important. William Penn stepped foot in the new world, and what today is known as Penn's Landing on the Delaware River in Philadelphia on October the 29th, 1682. Okay? At the very same spot, on Friday, September the 28th, 2012, at the start of America with Jesus, I joined other national leaders, including Dutch Chiefs, Bill Hammond, Jimenez, Harry Jackson, Joe Matera, and so on, in conducting a soul cleansing ceremony right there at Penn's Landing on the Delaware River, where Penn stepped the shore. And we sprinkled the water with salt as a kind of prophetic sign that we wanted salt preserves. Anyway, have a look at this clip. I take a pinch of salt and put it into the water. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Symbolically saying, God, I'm willing to be poured out into this nation to bring healing. And then if you will second, then we'll have a dedicatory prayer after you make your personal commitment. Amen. Amen. Exactly one month later to the day, Hurricane Sandy wound its way up the east coast and made this almost 90 degree turn at Tom's River, New Jersey. The eye of the hurricane went right over the town and God called me to be based. Now, the hurricane tracked like this, this is the official metaphor. See the way it's come up and went right across Tom's River. More than that, when it got more inland, the eye of the hurricane passed over Penn's Landing, the exact same spot where we stood one month before at that spot, cleansing ceremony, and 300 and something years before that William Penn stepped the shore. What am I saying when I hear you say? Nothing! But it's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> coincidence? Maybe, maybe not. But sometimes coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. Amen. Let me take you back a bit. On my website, we had the vision of the coming wheel of reawakening, and it's been there since February 2000. This is the vision that God showed me from the northeast just after I got here. It's been on our website for all this time. And in that vision, I relate how the great wheel of reawakening that God showed me is rolling into the northeast. Remember, I saw this back in 2000. And I saw this giant wheel rolling into the northeast. This thing was so 
so huge, it would make the Empire State Building look like a Tinkins toy in comparison. It had four giant spokes connecting with an inner hub, and in the first spoke was written a word beginning with P. Prayer to capture the attention of God. The second spoke had purpose. Purpose obtained from hearing His heart. And then power to enable the outworking of His purposes. Passion to move us from apathy to activity. And finally, it all revolved around the central hub, which was the word unity. Now, see, unity does not necessarily come easy in a nation that celebrates independence as a virtue. We don't do things together too well. Even our movies perpetuate the great one man myth. It's always Arnold who's going to save us all. Or it's Superman who's going to save us all. Or it's the Die Hard guy, come on. Or it's Iron Man. It's always the one man. Whereas true spiritual leadership is about having a team of people worshipping together in cohesion and leading and pushing the ball forward together as a team. But we have too many one-man bands here in America. But this is what I saw. And I can, look, when I saw the satellite, I couldn't help think of the wheel that God showed me. The wheel that I saw was a thousand miles wide, touching Boston to Washington and stretching out to Pittsburgh. And Hurricane Sandy was exactly the same size. And I, I tell you what, as a result, I mean, many people were saying, God power washed the Jersey Shore. Now, you know as well as I do, the level of debauchery that goes on between Memorial Day and Labor Day on the Jersey Shore. And AC, well, Chuck was down there a few months earlier, I think it was May last year, prophesying that it would be underwater. And the whole time I can hear God saying, Excuse me, I'm still here waiting. What does He have to do to get our attention? Well, I don't know about you, but I've never seen so much unity come because of a disaster amongst the churches all around Ocean County and all up and down the Jersey Shore and right from Cape May right up to Staten Island and New York up the Rockways and so on. Just incredible. But why does God have to send a hurricane to make us work together when we're supposed to be working together without being prodded? The main thing is we need to change the world. That's our job. Or it will change us. Simple as that. What is step one to changing the world? You've got to change. A lot of people are praying, Father, change my life. Father, change my husband. Oh, Father, change our pastor. God is saying, you change. Pray that you can change to be more the person that he wants you to be. And I've got to say that things aren't going to change until you change them. You can never step into the same river twice. Because it's not the same river, and you're not the same person. Now, if you have a dream, raise your hand if you've ever had a dream. If you have a dream, change is the only way that you will reach that dream.
second to stop you drowning in a sea of mediocrity. And inspiration is the fresh air that fills the sails of new dreams. Raise your hand if you haven't had a broken dream. Some of those dreams have to be broken. Because unless they die, see, there's no one who's ever done anything great for God who has not had to go through a Gethsemane experience first. Whom God uses those he will test. The greater the test, the greater the testimony. Be careful when you seek a prophecy because you just might get more than you expected. If the prophecy is truly from God, perhaps He is just trying to encourage you at a time before you're going to go through a great test. But, I want to give you the opportunity tonight to resurrect your broken dream. God leads one desire. There are two kinds of desire. Desires of the flesh, we have to try and bridle them, keep them under control, don't let them run wild. And then there's desires of the spirit. God leads by them. those are his leading because he put it in your heart. You think it's you, but he put it in your heart. If you think about the thing that's in the center of your heart, that if money was no object at all that you could do for God, no matter how silly or outlandish it sounded, but anything at all that you could do for God, what is it deep down there in your heart that if you could do anything for God, what would it be? Some of you would say, I've got to be a missionary. Some would say, I've got to be a pastor. I've got to be a preacher. Money is no object because if it's his will, it's his bill. So tonight, there's very little difference between desire and your dreaming. Because your dreams are birthed out of your desire. Which you must have every single of your spirit. So tonight, there's an opportunity for you to resurrect that broken dream. If you know that's you, get up out of your seat right now and quickly come down. I'm not going to wait too long. You better get down here quicker. I'm just going to close it all up. Oh, 
great thing. I'm just telling you what I believe is the truth. You can proclaim it and declare it. And God is waiting for you to exercise the authority that he died to give you. Come on, somebody. And he can resurrect broken dreams. And tonight, I'm here as God's agent. And I declare, in the name of Jesus, I call forth from the grave every broken dream that's of you, dear Lord, that you place in the hearts of these precious, wonderful people. I declare in Jesus' name that those dreams shall live again. This night, let it be the beginning of a new germination, of a new birth. First, if it does not fall into the ground and die, it will not grow, it will not germinate, it will not hatch, it will not multiply. In the name of Jesus, let it be so tonight. By the hands of each one to seal this in Jesus' name. To seal this in their hearts and declare it to be released right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. It be released right now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus, let it be released. Right now. Let me get this back row right here. In Jesus' name. Released. Released into the land of new dreams. Of resurrected dreams. No more broken dreams. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Everybody in the house stand to their feet. Everybody in the house begin to shout to the Lord. Come on, shout it! We shout to you, Lord! We call upon your name! We put the enemy to fight over our life! The one that stole our dreams! In the name of Jesus, be rebuked! And fresh dreams, dead dreams, come back to life this night!
God bless you. And your pastor and his wife, thank you for providing the sanctuary. God bless you. Thank you to the sound man. Thank you to Barbara for the food. Thank you all for coming out. Could have done something else tonight. Got Ivan here and his friend all came all the way from Tom.